Good morning, everybody. I usually don't film in the mornings, but it's taking kind of another slow start. It looks like it'll be another beautiful morning. It's forecasted to be a bit warmer today, so I'm putting a put my white dry <laughs> my white rash guard back on. It was a beautiful night. It was so quiet. Um, so we had an offshore wind, so there was no waves. Like even this has just been picking up the last half hour or so. Super quiet, but the bugs were out. Let's see, that's always the catch. The wind's blowing off the land, all the bugs get pushed to the shore. But it'll be a, looks like it'll be a great day for paddling. I might be able to sail along shore on calm seas. Only a day or day and a half to Whitefish Point now. And then down into Whitefish Bay. Aaron's. Aaron's coming out. Good one, two, three, four, five. Five Aaron's. Where the hell are they coming from? They're coming from the water. If anyone, if anyone is familiar with the migratory paths of Aaron's, please let me know. Do they ever cross Lake Superior? I just saw five cross right in front of me from open water. Aaron's are not open water birds. puts into perspective uh, this shoreline. Just low dunes and cobblestone beaches for miles and miles and miles in each direction. And every now and then a little house or a cabin. Nowadays they use these big um, strobe lights most places just because there's no moving parts, there's nothing really to break. Um, you know, it's just a big plastic um, lens but it still has some cuts to it, some shape to it, to focus the light out into a, a beam, basically, that radiates out flat across the water so it can be seen really far away. Before, they would have a Fred Snell lens, which would be glass, and they'd have a light inside of it. And then the, the lens itself, would, you know, a lot of times those would rotate, so they'd have these huge systems of bearings, and sometimes they use mercury to float them so they could rotate weights and pulleys down the tower so the thing could move, kind of like a, uh, a grandfather clock. But this is a lot easier, and this is what most uh, navigational beacons are nowadays, just an electronic you know, strobe light. Most of them have been automated since the 60s or 70s now. Glad they let people up here to see it. It's cool. All right, going down. And more down. Made it! <laughs> it's 
it's amazing to see that uh, people you know, are taking care of these things. I certainly like paddling by and visiting. All right, time to get back on the water. A lot of paddling still to do today. Probably the worst flies besides Antonati. They are all over me. Yeah, they've done a lot of work in the last 10 years. Looks great. Glad it's being preserved. This wind is doing really strange things. It's coming kind of south or southeast over the land and then it hits the lake and it's just tumbling around. It doesn't help I'm going very close to it. About as close as I can. Even now I've got to tighten up a bit there. And it's gusty too. It's not very consistent. Here. See, now it's just going to blow me off course. Well, those things, if it were a bit lighter, I think I'd be able to go faster <laughs> with this, right, this angle. Getting a lot of practice sailing close to the wind. And it's so uh, gusty, having to change a sail every two or three minutes. If this were behind me, it'd be great. I wouldn't notice. But going into it, all these slight changes as it comes over the land are amplified. Shore. Try to get close to land and get out of the wind a bit. It's just, it's just wearing me out. <laughs> too blustery, too close. All right, heading for shore. <laughs> Gotta get out of the wind for a bit. Back on land already. About midday, flies are already attacking me. <laughs> uh, but this is my second lighthouse of the day. And uh, this is uh, the Vermilion Point Lighthouse. And there's actually a kayaker sign. I guess that means I should sit here, eh? I don't know why they're trying to shovel instead of a paddle, but in a whitewater boat. But hey, I mean, use whatever you got, right? This lighthouse is a very different style. It's pretty much a house with a tower built into it. So on the last trip I did out here, some 10 years ago again, uh, I just paddled right by here. I've, I've actually never been here before. I paddled by because it was raining and wind was much stronger than it is today and pointed even more along the shoreline. So I did not want to waste time. <laughs> yeah, so this is something that I always find amazing. So there's the life-saving services. And there are all these houses and stations along the shoreline. And basically, if they saw a boat in trouble, these groups of guys would, would row out in pretty much any sort of weather. Look, here's the, the picture of this, this crew here. You know, so they're just in a kind of a deep V dory sort of thing, rowing. You know, so it's like, um, it's like surf boat, you know, like they have those competitions in Australia, I know, where you row out through the surf and turn around and come back. It's basically the same thing. And that was these guys living. And they lived out here, you know, a hundred years ago, when there was even less out here than there is now. <laughs> it would have been a very lonely existence. 
and a very dangerous one too, paddling out into Lake Superior on the roughest, coldest days, trying to save lives. And it just shows how important it was deemed that people were here because there was so much traffic and commerce on Lake Superior and it was so important. So Vermilion I know is not as busy as Crisp Point just because I know it's harder to actually get to here and there hasn't been the, the push to res restore it. It's a wonderful spot. Butterflies and smell all these pines. If it was later in the day, I would think about camping here, but you're not supposed to. Nature Conservancy land and all, day use only. On shore, it's actually kind of hard to see it because all the trees are so tall, but out on the water, you can see it from quite a ways, even though it's pretty far inland. Look at this. Wow. Look at these dunes. Beautiful. Such a fragile ecosystem. Always moving, always changing. Critical nesting grounds for plovers, sandpipers. my gear <laughs> my kayak is over there so here's the rundown uh, I am at Whitefish Point you can see the shipwreck museum sign right there um, I'm having a bite to dinner because I'm waiting for some friends of mine who live nearby uh, they are gonna come pick me up because all day paddling into this wind and listening to the weather radio uh, t tonight and big chunk of tomorrow is going to be uh, thunderstorms and so I could find a spot out here at the point to hunker down uh, and then it'd just be me hanging out in the rain by myself all day but they only live like half an hour away so they're gonna drive up and grab me and then we're gonna hang out at their place and then they'll drop me off when the weather's good and then I'll paddle back to their place <laughs> yeah it's fun having friends everywhere Nick and Danielle Marquette and Henry and Barb and Autrain and now uh, Chris and Michelle here in, in Paradise or close enough to Paradise yeah so anyway Paradise is a town just south of here and it's a very uh, cottagey sort of place I'll take you on a tour when I'm done mm. uh. oh I also made myself a cup of tea because you know I can oh that's lovely I knew going into this I wanted to not just be totally off of my own doing things so since I'm in an area where I know people, I'm you know, calling people up and uh, you know, getting to visit people that I haven't spent time with in you know, a couple of years now with COVID so it's, uh, it's good. Nice change to uh, other trips where either don't know anybody for hundreds of miles or you're just trying to get from point A to point B and there's no one around in the first place. Well, I was going to give you a tour, but I was, uh, it was a nice, you know, warm, kind of breezy afternoon and then uh, it started raining. And so I am currently on the porch of the gift shop. 
<laughs> just waiting for my friends to get here. Could be worse. Could be worse. So, something that just occurred to me looking at the lighthouse here is it looks pretty much the same style as the light out on Manitou Island. If you remember that, it's probably a couple episodes ago or something. For me, it was about two weeks ago now. Um, but the, the structure and the size and the shape and how it has a little bridge that goes over from the building. I bet these were built pretty close to the same time. Because they look, they look very, very similar. See, look, even in the rain. These bastard little flies are trying to bite you all the time. <laughs> This is full on Edmund Fitzgerald country up here. So yeah, I'm getting some weird looks. You know, my stove out, cooking dinner in the grass at a very popular, uh, you know, museum and beach and yeah. Searchers all say they ma they'd have made Whitefish Bay if they put 15 more miles behind her. How are you? Good yourself? Pretty well, thank you. Kayaking today <laughs> and every day. <laughs> Oh, what's that down there? Oh, there's a guy kayaking. Oh, cool. I wonder where he's coming from. <laughs>